Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today I would like to explain you about the include statement and the header functions. To avoid having to write all the code in a file, the programming languages incorporate functions or statements to package portions of code that can be used thanks to the programming language, in this case PHP. To include this package or files, PHP provides four functions, include, include once, require, and require once. In this video, we will focus on the first function, include. The include statement takes all the text, code, markup that exists in the specified file and copies it into the file that uses the include statement. Including files is very useful when you want to include the same PHP, HTML, or text on multiple pages of a website. I am going to show you an example. We have this PHP file called footer.php, which contains the copyright of my website. On the other hand, I have the index.php file, which is the main file of my website. Including files saves a lot of work. This means that you can create a standard header, footer, or menu file for all your web pages. Then, when the footer needs to be updated, you can only update the footer include file. If for some reason the file path is not accessible, either due to lack of permissions or because the file does not exist, a warning line will be generated without stopping the execution of the page. In that way, even if we have an error message, the web loads normally. This include statement is usually used when the files to be incorporated do not include any critical or necessary functionality in our application. Now, let's talk about the header function. To understand this function, we must know the operation of the HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which can be found on all websites. When a user requests a web page from a server, the process can be described in four steps. The browser requests the document from the server through an HTTP request. The server prepares the document. The server sends the document to the browser through an HTTP response. Then, the browser shows the document to the user. In other words, when a server sends a web page to the browser, it not only sends the web page, but also additional information, a status and header fields. Every time you visit a website, you can see the headers of the request sent. As an example, let's see this on the Google page. For that, we go to the browser we are using, in this case Google Chrome, open the developer tools and go to the network tab. After that, we put in the address bar the website we want to visit and when the page is loading, the website information is also loaded with the headers and the status. Knowing this, you can do all sorts of things using the header function in PHP. Let's see some examples. You can redirect the user to other page. The following code will redirect the browser window to the given location as soon as the code is executed. Even though you redirect the user successfully, this is not the proper way to do it. The above code does not generate the 301 response, which means the target page will lose a hit count and CO ranking. To avoid that, you have to add an additional header. You can add some redirection interval by using the following code. Also, you can prevent the browser to cache pages by using the following code. The above example helps to prevent caching by sending header information, which overwrite browser setting to not cache. And finally, remember, the header function must be called before any actual output is sent. 